Now some of us, you know, we can go, we can get along with, with, without being healed for, from our eyes because, you know, we can get along with glasses. I mean, why struggle when I can just put my glasses on, I can see. So sometimes when if it's, a, it's a, like an incurable disease, a terminal disease, there's no other resource that you can turn to, that's when it's easier to trust God and to believe in the Lord. So anyway. What I'm trying to bring out is that just because you have belief in healing doesn't mean that you have the faith for healing. So, although blind Bartimaeus had the belief that Jesus could heal him, that doesn't mean he had the faith that Jesus would heal him. So, question, how did blind Bartimaeus receive the faith to be healed? He had to receive it from Jesus. Now, when did he receive it? He, I believe, it happened in verses 49 and 50. Okay, now let's look at verses 49 and 50 once again. It says, So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer, rise, he is calling you. Now, it is one thing for you to call upon the Lord. It's another thing for the Lord to call upon you. So now, it says here in verse 50, when he heard that he, the, the Lord was calling him, what happened, it says in verse 50, and throwing aside his garment, he arose, he rose and came to Jesus. Now, I believe that at that moment, at that very moment, Blard Bartimaeus received an impartation of faith to believe for his healing. Now the evidence is also shown in verse 50 when it tells us he threw aside his garment and came to Jesus. Now back in the days of Bartimaeus, it was a custom for blind people to wear a certain type of garment to indicate that they were blind. So years ago, I heard a preacher that, was, uh, that shared on this, that it was kind of a grayish colored garment, a grayish colored mantle that blind people in those days wore. That was kind of like to signify to others that, you know, I'm a blind person. And so, you know, people would then try to be more careful and more cordial and kind to that individual. So when Bartimaeus was called by the Lord, I believe that's when the gift of faith was imparted to him by Jesus. Now, and that's why at that moment when he received that impartation of faith, he cast off his garment. Hallelujah. Say, wow, he just took off his garment, indicating that he didn't need it anymore because he knew that he would receive his healing. Hallelujah. You see, he didn't need to keep wearing that grayish mantle, that garment, to indicate that he was a blind man because now he's, re he's recognizing he has a new identity. I'm not a blind man. I'm a, I'm a man that now can see, hallelujah, that will be able to see because I have this faith. So the reason why I believe that that's when he received faith from Jesus is because why didn't he cast off his garment before that you see so at that moment we see that there is an action of faith that takes place I can see now he he tossed off his garment in his case because he had faith I broke my glasses because I wanted faith and I was hoping that God would be merciful to me yes God you know, by my works, boom, I believe. So you're going to bless me. There's a difference between faith and presumption. Okay? I can just see Bartimaeus casting off his garment and excitedly running to Jesus. Now he's this blind man. He's just hearing, but he's just casting off his garment. He's running to Jesus. Wow, that was his happy hour. <laughs> Now, in verses 51 and 52, let me read again. So Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? 
The blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Now, if, do you have a pen? You have a pen? You have a nice pen? Anybody has a nice pen? Everybody has all kind of cheap pens. <laughs> okay, say this is an expensive pen. So, Brother Mark gives me this pen. Now, he gave me this pen, so now it is my pen. But I got it from him. All right? Okay. I'll give you back your pen. That was just an example. Now, in the same way, Jesus gave Bartimaeus faith but it be and so when he received that faith it became his faith but he got it from Jesus right so now when Jesus said go your way your faith has made you well it was his faith but it was his faith that came from Jesus you see that we we need to understand. We need to we need to real, uh, we need to see this because many times we see we think that oh it was a faith that Bartimaeus had apart from Jesus and somehow he generated that faith. Oh we we say that oh because he heard about Jesus he heard about Jesus healing people healing the the blind and the lame and so. He's thinking, wow, faith is, and we're thinking faith is being stirred up in him. Yes, there's a certain amount of faith or belief, but yet he didn't receive that impartation of faith, that gift of faith to believe without a shadow of a doubt that I would receive my healing, that I would receive my sight. That's what we need to pray for. That's what we need to wait upon Jesus for. I remember when I, when I went to Korea, when I went to Pastor Cho Yong-gi's church. His name is now David Yong-gi Cho. But when I was there in 1978, when I was at this conference, I was the only Asian person that was there. It was a New Zealand, Australian conference for pastors that came from down below. And so somehow this uh, pastor from Australia came through Japan. I was a missionary in Japan at that time. He said, let's go to this conference. I said, well, I wasn't invited. I'm not a New Zealander or Australian. But he said, well, why don't you go? You'll be my guest. Of course, he's saying this from his own side without any permission. So I called Korea, and they said, yes, why don't you come over with them? And so I went over. And then Pastor uh, Cho, Yong Yi Cho, he's preaching. Remember, this guy has a big church almost... Uh, uh, he has 750,000 people in his church. They say he's almost hit a million, but then maybe might have dropped down to about 800,000 now. But he was telling us how that his son uh, was, was taking karate lessons. And he was the ringleader of the group. And so what happened is after they had eaten, after they had, had their training, they went to this store the shop and they ate meat and what took place was that all 19 of the boys died because of uh, food poisoning it was really drastic it was really bad the only one that still survived was Samuel which was Pastor Cho's son Pastor Cho was in another town and he was preaching at somebody else's church and then he had a phone call that his son Samuel was dying and they gave him kind of like the, the details and so he finished preaching and he rushed home and when he went home the doctor walked out and the doctor kind of like just said there's like no hope and he just went out and so he saw his son Samuel lying on the bed and so he went and he stretched himself over Samuel and he prayed for one hour and he says, when I prayed for one hour, he said, I had no faith at all. I, he says, he's brought healing to so many people, but at that time, he had no faith. So he prayed for another hour. He kept praying. And he just really prayed in the spirit as well. And then 
he didn't have any faith but he prayed another hour